Hello everyone and welcome to a week of Linux news for the 7th of May 2017. Oh, what a shame I missed Star Wars Day this week. May the 4th be with you. Yeah, bad joke, bad joke, I know. Starting in the news this week from the register, Welsh Linux Mint Terra Nerd jailed for 8 years. Now I know this story did appear last week and I thought this really is a non-story and my opinion just has not changed about it really. So it turned out this terrorist, Samata Ula, was carrying around a copy of Linux Mint with a lot of his Islamic State terror documents on a USB cufflink. And for that, he has been branded as the Linux Mint terrorist. Well, what are we saying? Anyone with a Linux distro on a USB flash drive is a terrorist. Oh no, I'm a terrorist many times over. Oh no, wait, I don't actually store documents on these. Yeah, it's a non-story. But let's look at some good news from Softpedia. Raspberry Pi Foundation says they are shipping the 250,000th Pi 0W this week. Fair play, they seem to have gone from strength to strength in selling many Raspberry Pi units. Which seems to be a contrast to most computing companies at the moment, which seem to be reporting downturns all the time with the number of hardware devices sold. I believe at the moment tablets are being worst hit. No one is interested in a fondle slab anymore. Well, to be fair, I am interested in one, but there's none around that suit my requirements. Anyway, back to the Raspberry Pi. So the Pi Zero W has only been on sale for nine weeks and has clocked up a quarter of a million units. If you did not know about the specs of the Pi Zero W, it is a very basic version of the Pi. One up from the Pi Zero because it has wireless and Bluetooth built into it. So the cost is 10 US dollars, and for that you get a 1 gigahertz processor, 512 meg of RAM, 802.11n wireless, the 40 pin GPIO, one USB port, and a mini HDMI port. I have not bought one because I can't really see the justification in one at the moment. I'm doing quite nicely with uh, the Pi 2s and Pi 3. Staying on the news with the Raspberry Pi, there is a canonical developer bringing SnapD, or Snap packages, to Raspbian, which is based on Debian 8. You can currently install Snap packages on Debian 9, on testing, and SID. I don't believe it has ever been backported to Debian 8 Jesse until now, or, although I suppose the focus at the moment for this is the Raspbian distribution. The advice here is that it's a work in progress and should not be used on an official production system. One feature it is missing is the ability to sandbox. And there is a note in the comments about it not working on the Pi 1 or Pi 0 because of incompatible hardware, i.e. the CPU is too old. The inclusion of snaps will bring a wider selection of packages you can install to the Pi. Packages that did not exist back in Debian Jesse. Kubuntu are running a wallpaper contest for the upcoming release of 1710. Upcoming release, hang on, we're some way off yet, so development has only just begun. Makes a change really, because up until now they have used the stock KD wallpaper. Although I have to say the stock KD wallpapers are very pretty. From OMG Ubuntu, Linux Mint is adopting LightDM as the login manager. I remember mentioning in a previous week of Linux news that this was possibility that it would be happening, but now the confirmation is that it is definitely happening, so Mint are dropping their Mint Display Manager in favour of LightDM, with Linux Mint version 18.2, a release date of which is not yet known. And to differentiate themselves from Ubuntu, they are creating a new theming for it, calling it the Slick Greeter. Superficially, the Slick Greeter bears an uncanny resemblance to the Unity Greeter. The greeter is also HIDPI friendly and supports taking screenshots, and is graphically configurable using the LightDM settings tool. Some security news now. The Intel AMT tool, which is used on the business and enterprise computers for a basic low-level access into the computer, it is not reliant on a specific operating system, so it, run on, it runs below the operating system layer. The AMT is designed to allow IT admins to remotely log into the guts of computers so they can reboot a knackered machine, repair and tweak the operating system, install a new OS, access a virtual serial console, or gain full-blown remote desktop access via VNC. 
it is essentially God mode. Normally AMT is password protected, this week it emerged that the authentication can be bypassed, and it can be bypassed by simply entering a no password at all. Um, I expected needs like a HTTP POST request just sent with a password of nothing, and that would allow you into the system. So yeah, basically it is trivial to log on to an Intel server which has this AMT port of, let's read down here, port 16992 and 16993 open to the internet. This feature won't be on the average home system, it is more for business and servers. It took Google one hour to shut down a massive self-replicating phishing campaign. This is news from Bleeping Computer. This fake Google Docs app would be emailed to you and when you click open it, it takes you to the Google sign-on page and I believe it has like a zero authentication so it goes straight through to opening the application. So upon opening it reads your address book and sends it to everyone in your contact list. And thus this worm spread very quickly. Fortunately, one Google staff member was visiting the slash r slash Google Reddit thread and was able to spot the trending topic detailing the phishing campaign. The Google engineer forwarded the Reddit thread to the right person and within an hour, after users first complained about the issue, Google had already disabled the fake app's ability to access the Google Zero Auth screen. Later on, as engineers had more time to investigate the issue, Google issued the following statement. We have taken action to protect users against an email impersonating Google Docs and have disabled offending accounts. We have removed fake pages and pushed updates through safe browsing. And our abuse team is working to prevent this kind of spoofing from happening again. We encourage users to report phishing emails in Gmail. And also Cloudflare was quick to take down all domains associated with the phishing attack. Well done to the companies involved there. From Make Tech Easier, how to make GNOME Shell look like Unity. And it turns out someone has written a script. You can get this script from GitHub. So it's pretty much point and click using this GNOME Layout Manager to change between different options. Kind of makes a mockery of the fact I did a 10 minute video showing how to do, get this done. Although, what's wrong with doing some of these things by hand? At least you know there are options to customize the desktop and Seeing how to use some of the tools, you may decide you might want to make some alterations to suit your own customizations, really. You can get the desktop how you want. But if you don't want to go through the entire video, well, there is this option now. Point and click. Well, almost point and click. You've still got to download the script and run it. And finally, for this week's stupid news from WordPress, Hall of Shame, something stinks in Abbotford. For our latest Hall of Shame entry, we turn our gaze towards the city of Abbotsford in Canada. For reference, here is their logo. Commit it to memory, as you'll want to remember what it looks like later. City officials took issue with a 2013 post written by a homeless blogger that criticised them for reportedly deliberately spreading chicken manure on a homeless person's camp in an effort to deter people from congregating in the area. To demonstrate just how dirty a move the blogger thought this was, he illustrated his post with a doctored image of the city's logo, which has been modified to include, well, let's scroll down and have a look, a large turd. <laughs> so the Abbotsford City Council sent WordPress a DMCA request ordering a takedown of the image. And WordPress refused. So it is unclear why the city council decided to go down this particular route, let alone why it took four years to do so. What is clear, however, that this stinks. Pardon the pun. <laughs> yeah, very good. So WordPress rejected the complaint and passed it on to the blogger for his perusal. In response, he updated the logo to make sure everyone knew it was a parody. But thanks to the stupidity of Abbotsford City Council, we all now get to laugh at them, even more than if they just let this die away quietly. And I noticed it had been picked up on Torrent Freak. That's where I got the story from. I'm sure it's been picked up elsewhere as well. Well, that was the week of Linux news. Thanks for watching. I'll see you all later.